Welcome back for another Top Notch video. This week, guys, we're going to be talking about the week of April 6th through April 10th. A lot has happened. Uh, you might have saw that I was offline for a little bit. I got married, so I was gone for a couple weeks. I am back and ready to start looking at markets. As always, our TSP Top Notch channel is about the, uh, like I mentioned, TSP or Roth IRA brokerage account funds. For the TSP, we look at the CSI and F funds. For Roth IRA, Brokerage accounts, we look at the ETFs, IVV, VXF, EFA, and AGG. These funds tend to equal each other. They, are, uh, they, they mirror each other, so they're very close. So if you're in one fund, you're definitely in the other. They, they equal each other. So we have the C fund equals IVV or the S&P 500. We have the S fund, which equals VXF or the small caps. We have the I fund, which equals EFA. And we have the F fund, which equals AGG. As we get going, kind of what we go over is kind of a general overview of our funds. We check everything out and then we go from there, guys. So let's dig right into it. The first thing we like to look at is the TSP um, TSP Talk Top Notch channel. What this uh, TSP Talk channel is about or website is they kind of go over the indices and the funds and kind of show us what funds did for the week. As you can see, TSP funds had a huge week, guys. In my entire career of doing this, I've never seen funds up this much. 18% um, gain for the S fund, 12% gain for the C fund in just a single week. And that doesn't even include uh, Friday's close. We weren't able to get that in at the moment. But this has erased about almost half the losses we took for this um, crisis. So that is really good. That is pretty incredible um, on a chart basis. As you can see here, I've never seen charts like look like this in a single week. I mean. We gained almost 30% uh, in the funds for an entire year last year. This rose almost 18% and 12% respectively in a single week. Very, very incredible moves, huge moves for this week. Where are we going forward from here? What do we need to look at? Looking at the uh, S&P 500 with such big gains, one thing I want to be cautious about uh, on the Top Notch channel and going into this is what, where do we go forward from here? So we just had a giant week here, guys, as you can see. TSP Talk does some good charts here. Please check out their website if you're interested in them. Um, we're getting close to that 50-day moving average, getting close to a lot of resistance with the S&P 500. So we want to be watching our technical charts very closely as we continue forward with these moves. We've um, lost a bit, but we made a lot of it back for our charts. And I'll go ahead and show you what we have exactly in the Top Notch channel at this point. Um, as you can see from 2008, what we saw here when we got to the 50-day moving average, saw a lot of resistance in here and then a big waterfall uh, effect downwards again before we saw a bottom. This happened over a number of months. So we're approaching that 50-day moving average for the first time. So we want to start looking into our technical charts and seeing what they show us to try and get out so make sure we don't take additional capital loss. At this point, we are more uh, bearish than we are bullish. So we're going to be taking a very close look at our funds and trying to protect capital during these times without trying to lose additional capital. Um, moving forward for the S&P 500, as you can see here, like I mentioned, we're near that 50-day moving average. Uh, we are getting close to that. We do have a gap up here. Gaps are tend to be filled, but we have some gaps below as well. Seeing a lot of resistance in here, we'd like to see this gap filled. Looking forward to seeing if it will end up getting resistance on this line here. This is the 50-day moving average, or if possibly we could get to the 200-day moving average. As you guys remember, we kind of bought in after this uh, this low here, we bought in right around this area for the Top Notch channel. So we took a, a quite additional loss off of that. We did not expect that to come. Um, we just thought it might have been a 10% 10 10 correction. But as always, markets do a lot of different things. We were able to make a lot of that back this week, which I'll show you. Hopefully, we'll move back to this 50-day moving average. We'd like to siphon off some of our capital again, um, taking very little, if any, loss for the year. But we'll have to wait and see where things go from there. But that's what we're looking at for technical analysis for the S&P 500. That's IVV or the C fund. Um, one thing we saw here with the weekly moves, uh, this is the weekly chart here. This is the trading range all the way back to 2018. As you can see, we've been in this box for quite some time. As we know with boxes, we tend to go up and down, up and down. As you can see, um, back in 2018, right towards the end of the year, we were out of that box. A lot of fear in here. And we ended up going into that box and then overextending towards the back half of 2019. Huge difference from the last year, year before it. And then we dropped all the way through this box and now we are back in it. So yet to be seen here of where we're going. We're seeing some gaps here. We saw a gap way up here and a gap here. We're going to try to shoot for this gap in here and maybe try to remove some of our capital in the future just to try and protect that. But we'll have to wait and see where markets go. 
Um, one thing I'm kind of curious about about for a retest is we saw all the initial drop for the, the virus. We're kind of past that point now with virus stuff. And now we got to see where the uh, economic damage is done. So that could be our second retest bounce off the lows. Yet to be seen, yet to be determined. Um, we don't make predictions on this channel. We just kind of like to put some of the data out on what we see. Moving forward, we're going to get into some of our basic charts and kind of go through each one of those. One of the first ones we start with is IYY. That's a general market fund of all stocks and everything that's in the market. We kind of like to look at that, kind of see what the general market's opinion is because that's the only opinion that matters. No news articles matter. It just depends on what the general market says. So looking at IYY, what are we seeing with IYY? So with IYY, we saw this uh, bounce here at the 200 day moving average. We thought, oh, this would be a great time to get in. We got in here on the top notch channel and then we saw a significant decline. Now the reason we didn't uh, Get, get right back out of markets is because we didn't want to miss a week like this. If you would have missed this last week, you would have taken a serious hit. That is that is a week that you will probably never see again. That is an incredible volatility back up in the markets. And if you missed out on that, that is um, rough, very, very rough. So we were able to um, navigate this downturn here and we are still in markets right now. As you can see, we're seeing, starting to see this 200-day moving average start to decline a little bit. That makes us a little bit worried. And like I mentioned, that 50-day moving average is right here. Well, we yet to be seen if we can get to right around that point. We're looking for about 140 in the markets before we start to, for IYY, before we start to really start to want to guard some of our capital. On our technical charts, we'll take a look at those as well. For IYY, as you can see here, for IYY, we are still going up on a long-term chart. We did turn around here, so our our, our long-term charts did turn around here. And one thing I would like to mention is we did see a couple bars in here right around March time frame. We thought this would be a good time to buy in, especially when Bollinger Bands came down. And sure enough, um, uh, we, we bought in towards the end of the 6th or March 6th there. And we thought that would have been a good time to buy in, kind of when it hit the lower Bollinger Band. We were a couple negative bars. And we hit way more negative bars going in there. Another two additional bars. Lost a lot of capital in there, but saw a lot of bounce come back. We are now in these Bollinger Bands. Have a lot of move room to move around in here. Markets are turning back up. What we don't want to see is a fake out on these charts. A fake out would be a significant move lower than this mark here. So we want to be very, very careful on the weekly chart. And the way we find those... Um, the fake outs on the longer term charts is by looking at shorter term charts. So on the midterm chart, as you can see, we just broke through on the midterm chart. Very positive here for IYY. Looking very, very good. Just uh, want to see where this could go from here. Again, top notch channel sold right around here on the 6th. Um, and we uh, missed that low by a couple bars there about, about, about a week, two weeks before we start to saw a decline. Should have bought in more towards the 18th of the month. And we would have been in the, the green, but we bought more towards the 6th of the month. So not there yet, guys, but getting close. Moving to our four-hour chart, our, our fastest moving chart. Um, as you can see, we are in the green here, so we're doing very well. Uh, we're kind of waiting for this blue bar, which is our PPO line, to go below our moving average. So that'll kind of give us our indicator of when we need to sell again. And we are looking to sell at this point. We've gained enough back in our market funds that we are willing to sell. So we'll have to wait and see where that's at. Our uh, oscillator, which is those bars there, the green bar, are still going up higher and higher. Usually we like to sell when they start to go back down lower and lower. So we let this one go by in early April. Uh, we didn't see that line just cross. We got very close to selling here. Did not cross and continued with our hold. And we we're very happy that we did. Ended up gaining a lot more here. And our derivative oscillator is now from, uh, went from Thursday's close of 649 to 6.51 so we're still still rising up quite a bit here but we're getting close to that point where we're looking to maybe sell so that's IYY moving on to other market funds the S&P 500 or IVV the C fund seeing something very similar like I mentioned bought in around this point here ended up not being a, a good buy-in point for us save that we uh, didn't sell for a long period of time just because we didn't want to lose when that we saw that big bounce happen. Sure enough, that did happen the last two weeks. Really saw that bounce right back up here. We gained a ton back off of this chart here. Yet to be seen, we're seeing a lot of places where we could have resistance in here, guys. Seeing some open gaps, like I mentioned. 
This 50-day moving average is resistance. The 200-day moving average is resistance. At that point, we'd be positive in charts and would be very awesome, but we're going to look at two charts to make sure that we are watching the technical damage or technical analysis. We do not make decisions based off emotion. So if it tells us to sell, we will sell. Please look to our Facebook page and Twitter accounts if you want to see when we are buying and selling stocks. Um, on a technical analysis for these charts for our TSP funds, IVV or the C fund, as you can mention, see on a long-term chart, weekly chart, we are getting that bounce here. We are in our second week up from our derivative oscillator, so this is a good time to buy in usually, to look towards that on our long-term charts, a good long-term entry point. Uh, five years or more entry point would be a good term now to start buying in, now that we've had this crash downward, but we wanna see what will happen. Could we possibly see um, Another test of the lows, I know in the past we have, I know in 2019 we did not see that and we sold a little early and we didn't get all the gain for 2019. We ended up around 19% for the year where markets were up around 20%. So we lost out about 10% of the market because we didn't catch that B bottom. On a midterm basis for this chart, as you can see, the PPO line just crossed our moving average. That's usually a very positive sign for stocks. Prices reacting very well here, as well as the oscillator starting to move off the lows. Doing very well here on a midterm basis. And on a short-term basis for charts, we are starting to see this chart top out for IVV, VXF. Uh, we'll have to wait and see for that. Like I mentioned, we're not going to sell probably until we see this line cross below again. So we're waiting for that. That's kind of our, our sell move for IVV. We'll make sure to let you guys know this week if we see that. Um, for, the mid, for the most part, though, we are sticking with stocks for now and we'll have to see where things go from there. Let's move into our next chart which is VXF or the S fund. With VXS or the S fund, this took one of the biggest hits out of our stock funds. Huge move, didn't even get back the 200 day moving average here and lost a, a, just a ton of capital here. Saw a very positive low here and then a higher low here which is great but doesn't mean you cannot retest the lows here. I think. This is the virus low here, and I think we could see another low here possibly when we start to see some of this economic data come in with much of the country shut down. We're going to start to see those numbers pour in and see where stock investors want to go from there. A lot of unknowns right now for stocks, and that's where we're starting to see what, what people are trying to do with stocks. On a technical analysis for VXF, as you can see on this chart here, long-term basis, weekly basis, we are coming back here. We saw this chart turn around here in this last week, so good news story there. Um, some green bars here, we are back into our Bollinger Bands here. Really crazy to see how far out we got outside of our Bollinger Bands here. I would think after this week we'd go back in, we didn't. Uh, second week in a row outside the Bollinger Bands, and we finally price moved back in here. Doing well, the oscillator is starting to move up here on a long-term basis. Good long-term buy and hold position here if you're outside of stocks. We haven't seen this low of stock market i mean this is below the 2018 lows guys this is real down there this is moving back all the way back to i would say the bottom we're right right around 2000 early 2017 prices so that is quite a long time ago really good long-term buy and hold positions here in here for vxf on a, a midterm basis as you can see just crossed here very positive things for our midterm basis scale looking very good for uh, a couple week hold here, so we're gonna watch that closely. Seeing it, the, that oscillator come out here and move up here, price is starting to react to that. PPO line just crossed, so that's good. Hoping for good things for the next couple of weeks for that, and on a short term basis. As you can see, our PPO line is above our moving average, very positive there. Our oscillator is positive in the green, moving up that hill, up that mountain. Now we just wanna start getting cautious here. We did move below here for one or two days, we decided to hold and hold that risk there, and we were very happy that we did that. We ended up gaining quite a significant amount ever since that dropped down just a tad bit, um, but we're watching it very closely. Moving forward from there onto EFA or the iFund, this is International Markets. Um, some recovery here, doing very well here. Again, another chart that did not make it back to the 200-day moving average. As far as our 50-day moving average and 200-day, we're starting to see that slope down again. So we want to be careful with that on a technical analysis with that chart. Looking at EFA, long-term basis, weekly chart. 
Starting to see that chart come out a little bit too. PPO line starting to move back up here, but has not crossed here. And we're starting to see the derivative oscillator move up again. Again, we're going to be very skeptical of this until we see this PPO line cross on a long-term basis. We want to see that cross to kind of see uh, before we start getting our funds back in. As you can see, it gave us plenty of warning back here in February when it crossed here on a long-term basis. Um, if you would have sold back here, you would have saved yourself this entire painful move on the way down. So just being skeptical until we can see something in the long term. We still do have both our stock moves for the month of April, holding on to those, trying to wait and see where markets go from here. On a midterm basis for EFA or the iFund, cross here, very positive. Price is starting to react. Derivative oscillator or the is starting to move up here. So very, very good stuff happening there. On a short term basis, chart does look positive, been positive for a little while. Waiting for that drop here. We had one back early April, didn't bite. Good thing we didn't bite. And charts continue to move higher. Um, as note, we are not in EFA right now. We are in the CNS funds, but that's where we feel what we need to be, and that's where we feel most of the gains are happening at this time. Finally, let's look at bonds, one of the most interesting things. Bonds had a crazy year, so at, they started to explode towards uh, mid-March, and then once mid-March hit, uh, nothing was safe. They really crashed as well. We haven't seen uh, a huge crash like that. Look at the volatility on that, guys. That is um, almost a year's worth of like very small moves all throughout here, and then just this massive volatility in here, and then crazy upward movement towards the end of March, little sell pullback here, and then crazy back up again and now we're reaching almost reaching highs again getting very close to the highs here as you can see the lower trend line was taken out we are above that 200 day moving average safe fun to be in um, if you're older or uh, this is definitely a safe place to keep your capital for right now if you don't like all that vol volatility going on in the markets as far as the F fund or EF or F fund or AGG for stock prices on a long term basis as you can see, we just crossed on that 200 uh, on the, the weekly basis. Look at how quick this move was. You had uh, one week to get out here, and then basically just turned it around in three weeks, very quickly here. And you wouldn't have even you wouldn't. It would have been very hard to catch this based on our market model and our our notes here. It would have been very hard to catch this. We would have sold sometime right around here, and then um, we would have got back in markets uh, right around here. We would have, um, basically on our scale, we would have almost lost money on that scale. That's how quick that move was. It was incredibly fast. AGG is back up on the positive. So this is where we're going to be transferring money when we um, move out of stock funds instead of the G fund. Now that this fund is back up, doing very well here. This is positive. PPO is positive, doing very well. So that's where we'll have funds based out of when we are to stock funds. Right now we are in stock funds. On a two-day basis, we did see this jump way up here. Very rare to see the PPO line cross um, without a positive chart. We saw the PPO cross here April 30th, and we saw the derivative oscillator turn positive sometime about almost a week later. So just a ton of volatility going on, guys. And then on a short-term basis, as you can see here, drop below this line here, which is very sketchy on these short-term charts. And then we're able to move out, but we are outside the Bollinger Bands for price. So we want to watch that very close tight in here want to be very careful when they're tight like that usually that means big price movement on the way want to be careful with that but right now agg is up and doing very well so that's all of our stock funds for this week guys again i got married so i was um, out of the loop for two weeks i apologize for that please like subscribe or share really appreciate your guys's comments below um, for right now the top notch channel like i mentioned i'm going to show you guys some things here we are invested in the cns fund um, we are 50% in each one of those, which is 100% of our portfolio in stocks. Like I mentioned, we uh, bought in right around this area here uh, based off a 10% correction. We saw a ridiculous uh, fall from there. We held on because we want to be careful about the weeks to come. As always, look at this. I mean, if we would have sold somewhere in there and missed out on this game, we would have been disappointed. Did we make it all the way back? We'll show you guys right now. No, we did not. We are still down about 5% for the year. It's not terrible. Market funds are down more than that. They're down 13% and 21% and 20% 20, 20 respectively. So we are beating those market funds out quite significantly. We are lagging the F fund about 7 or 8%. Hoping to make that back with some... It's still uh, second quarter of the year, so we still got a lot of time to make that up. Got a lot of work to do. 
but we are ready to make those moves, ready to make that work. And of course, we just want to be careful if funds do decide to bounce. But only 5% down for the year. We're feeling pretty good of where we sit, hoping to get positive by the end of this year. Uh, moving forward, being a managed portfolio, we feel pretty confident about that in our moves to come. Last thing I want to show you guys is um, just a chart from 1932 to 1937, the Dow. So as you can see here, they had a giant fall, which kind of like what we had here. And then they had a giant move upward, which was great, but then they had quite a few months of downturn. This is what we're trying to avoid here on the Top Notch channel. We want to get this gain back of what we got. I don't know how long that will last, and then avoid this really treacherous downward period for months on end and that's why we're looking to those uh, weekly long-term charts to kind of drive our decision making so based off of that not off of motion will determine how much we stay in stocks I can see us pulling out a certain amount definitely in the weeks to come to kind of protect capital because we really want to avoid that but guys one thing I want to show you one thing that's really cool is after we had this retest which wasn't even a retest of the lows which we could see a retest of the lows. If we don't, we could just see some decline here from the economic fallout. Virus fallout here, economic fallout here, we could see that. What happened after that period is we saw years and years of really great growth. So don't just stay out of the markets for years to come. Um, it's really important that once we see a retest, or if we do see a retest, we'll always look to charts. We could see quite a significant gain off of these lows or off of a retest in the next year or two uh, to come. So please uh, keep that in mind. Want to keep a positive note on the end of the video. Again, please like, subscribe, or share. Really appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful week. That's another Top Notch video. We'll see you guys next time.